If you're looking to start a laser engraving business, should you pick up a MOPA fiber laser like this one right here? Or should you be looking at a CO2 laser? Well, this unit you see right here in front of me is called a MOPA fiber laser. This one is by a company called OhmTech and it's powered by a JPT 100 watt power supply. These range in price from $3,000 all the way up to $20,000 for your average hobby or prosumer model. These are high performance metal marking machines that are extremely fast and accurate. You'll also notice this has a flat aluminum work table that is drilled and tapped. This will allow for various types of fixturing and jigging which will allow for extreme reliability. This type of setup is extremely versatile and will allow for all sorts of jigs and fixtures. And speaking of jigs and fixtures, yes, a fiber laser will work with all types of rotary attachments. That's what's going to allow you to do tumblers and special handwriting pins. The MOPA fiber lasers are going to allow you to get those vibrant, bright colors you see on materials such as stainless steel and titanium. These fiber lasers can also mark gold, brass, sterling, silver, and this is where you're going to get those really amazing deep 3D etches you see on those challenge coins. When purchasing a machine like this, you most likely already have a specialized niche you're working in or that's the target market you're going after. This will allow you to scale your business up into industries like the medical field or aerospace. Now let's cover some things that might be a con for you and your business. Although it has a really neat fixture plate table here in the front, you will notice this is a much smaller work envelope versus the CO2. You will have a maximum work area of seven inches by seven inches on this particular unit. The initial purchase price on a fiber laser is gonna typically set you back far more than a CO2 laser. And lastly, a MOPA fiber laser will not work very well with wood. This here is a 60 watt CO2 laser engraver from OhmTech and right out the gate you will notice the size difference not only in the overall dimension but also the work field. These line of CO2 OhmTech laser engravers range in price from $2,000 all the way up to $20,000 again for your entry level hobby or prosumer models. They are going to have a much larger work field. This model is a 20 inch by 28 inch work area and you have a nice flat honeycomb workspace. These CO2 lasers, especially the 60 watt up to the 100 watt units, I consider these the jack of all trades or the workhorses in the laser industry. They're going to work on the widest variety of materials including wood. Not only can they raster high speed and create amazing images on a wide variety of materials, but they can also do full vector cutting as well. These CO2 units really shine for sign makers and crafters who need a large footprint and work with various sheet goods such as leather, acrylic, and various Baltic birch blanks. Most of your lineup of CO2 lasers will be compatible with all rotary attachments as well. However, they will not be as fast as a fiber laser and the setup will be a little bit more involved. These CO2 lasers are also a sealed unit with a built-in fume extractor and air pump, although I would highly recommend in the future you do upgrade those. Now let's see if some of the cons are a deal breaker for you. With a larger work envelope means a larger machine. That means this machine is heavier and harder to get into a work area if that's an issue for you you might consider a smaller unit or look into one of the units that has a detachable base or maybe consider a smaller fiber laser your typical co2 laser is going to work off of a gantry system so you're going to be dealing with servo or stepper motors and much more additional maintenance cleaning those mirrors as well and although a co2 laser can engrave the largest variety of materials please keep in mind you cannot etch into metal with a co2 laser at least the ones all the way up to 150 watts you're simply going to be removing the coating off of materials such as aluminum that's anodized or has a powder coating or a paint. You will not physically etch into the metal or cut the metal. You would need to look at a high performance uh, metal cutting laser engraving machine or something like a fiber laser. Although a CO2 laser will raster and vector, the raster imaging will be much slower on a CO2 versus a fiber. A CO2 laser is also equipped with a pressurized glass tube. That glass tube has a shelf life. This 60 watt unit is rated up to 1500 hours on medium use. If you step up to an 80 watt unit, that's a better bargain as you get 6500 hours on that tube use. And unfortunately, a glass CO2 laser tube is very brittle, requires extra care and maintenance, and if your machine is not equipped with one, you will need to purchase an external chiller. So as you can see, a fiber laser is a compact, high-speed, specialized unit used for a wide variety of materials in a small workspace 
with some limited capabilities where the CO2 laser is an all around workhorse and it can work in a wide variety of capabilities just at a slower speed with more options. Well, armed with this information, you should now know exactly which type of laser you should be researching. Do me a favor, take a look at the line of Ohmtech lasers, both the CO2 and the fiber. And if you wanna save 5% on that purchase, use my discount code RNGPRODUCTS5OFF. And if you guys gained any value out of this page, make sure you smash that like button and follow so you don't miss out on my next killer video covering all my laser tips and tricks. We'll catch you guys on the next one.